Hello, my name is Jonathan Broadwell. I'm the creator of the Serial Wombat Open Source Project and an embedded systems engineer for hire at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. You need help with an embedded systems project? Give me a call. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at one of the pin modes of the Serial Wombat 18AB, the pulse measurement pin mode. Uh, you may have seen a previous video linked to up here uh, that was for the Serial Wombat 4B. This does a very similar thing, and we're going to look at how it differs a little bit and some of the special things that the Serial Wombat 18AB chip can do on pulse measurements once it gets in. Today we're going to be focusing on measuring RC pulses. Uh, in the future we may take a look at measuring pulse speed of motors or things like that. But for today we're going to be looking at servo pulses that are coming in, provided by a six-channel RC controller. And at this point, I'd like to give a shout out to Isaac Jones of Electroflight's Epistles uh, website, who is using the Serial Wombat 18AB chip and noticed that it actually had some issues when I when you go to capture more than a couple of pulse pins at a time. That's not something that I checked in my unit testing. I tested one or two pins. When he took it up to six, it had problems. And he just did an exceptional job sending me, this is the email we were looking at, the uh, the the data he was seeing just really put on a clinic and how to pro provide a good bug report. So I looked into it in versions of the firmware prior to 2.1.1, which is 2.10 and earlier, the code for processing incoming signals through the DMA processor was not efficient enough to allow us to do a bunch of pins at one time. So I went into it, found the problems with the efficiency and solved them. And so now at this point, you know, eight, 10 pin, Pulse measurement should be no problem. So again, uh, thanks a lot to Isaac for, for his help on that. Uh, we resolved the problem together. So let's take a look at our circuit real quick. As you can see here, you've got a Serial Wombat 18AB chip. It's hooked up right now to my PC through a UART to USB converter. And we're providing five volts over the USB to a surface mount uh, LDO that I soldered to the bottom of the board. Uh, see the video that I linked to up here uh, for how to do that. And we're providing 3.3 volts to the receiver. And then we have pins 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 representing channels one through six of the RC receiver. That's where we're going to capture our pins. So let's take a look and at first, we'll prototype with the Wombat panel, take a look at the input values, and then we will go through and create an Arduino sketch that initializes the Serial Wombat chip and runs some uh, peripherals based on the inputs that come in. Okay, so here we have the Wombat panel application. You can get this through the C Sharp uh, Serial Wombat library on the Broadwell Consulting GitHub site. We're going to say open serial. My FTDI is on COM25, so I'm going to say 25. We'll wait just a second. And we read in, and we have version 2.1.1, which is the firmware you want to have if you're using this pin mode. Now let's go to fit pin 14 and turn on the pulse timer mode for that pin. And we're just going to say configure and auto sample. And we can see we're getting a pulse in of about 1500 uh, milliseconds. We can see we're getting a pulse time of about 1500 microseconds. And that's the nominal middle for a RC receiver. The transmitter is actually turned off right now. And so the default output, if it gets nothing out of this uh, receiver, appears to be the, the nominal middle value. So let's take a, this receiver and we'll turn the power on. And we see we get a little bit of glitching back and forth. That's good. That means we've got a live signal. And pin 14. And now if we take and we turn the main wheel, this thing actually has a, has a controller in it that stops you if it's held sideways from going sideways. So if I turn this main wheel back and forth, we can see we get a value that goes from about 920 to about 2135. So let's remember those values. Those are going to be important. 920, 2135. Now, one of the powerful things that the Serial Wombat 18AB chip can do that the 4B can't is do a lot of scaling and transformation on inputs internally. So let's go to the transform section of the process data input. 
And so we're going to say that the minimum signal you get in is 925. We'll make, we'll make sure that we can saturate. And the other, we know the maximum was 2135, so we'll make that 2125. We'll click Enabled on the input processing, then we'll say Configure Scaling. And what we can see that that does is it takes the input value and scales the minimum to maximum values that we said from a value from 0 to 65,535. And the whole Serial Wombat environment, uh, where possible, represents full scale, whatever full scale might be. For this case, it's wheel all the way to the left to wheel all the way to the right. For PWMs, it's zero to 100% duty cycle. For uh, other, th you know, for other things that have a, a range, then it's something else. And so we said our input, we're going to scale 925 to zero, and we're going to scale 2125 to 65535. So now, if I turn this particular wheel, we get a value that goes up to 65535 and down to zero. And this will become relevant as we start hooking up other uh, devices. So let's go and take a look now at pin 15. I'm going to go to pulse timer. I'm going to say configure and auto sample. If I take this guy and I pull the trigger, we can see he goes up to 2118 and down to 885. So his range is a little bit different. 2115 to 885. So let's go in once again and go to the transform here. And what did I say that value was? I have a short memory. 2118. So we'll make that 2100 just to make sure that we can saturate it. And we will say enabled and configure input scaling. And once again, we see now the trigger goes to the middle. If I pull the trigger up, it goes up to 65,535. If I push the trigger all the way out, we get values that are down. It looks like not quite at zero. So I'm actually going to make this minimum a little bit higher because I want to make sure that we can saturate. Okay, that looks good and solid. So 900 to 2100 are the values we're going to use for that. Okay, the next one uh, on pin 16. Pulse timer, configure, auto sample. And for this particular guy, channel 3 is this button right here. So again, got to hold it up. If I click the button, it's around 1700. If I click it again, it goes down to about 1300. So since this is an on and off button, we really don't care about the proportional output. I'm going to go on the transform here and just say, hey, if it's, a, if it's below 1500, I want you to saturate at zero. If it's above 1501, I want you to saturate at uh, the total output. So we will say enabled on the out, on the input processing and hit scaled. And so now we see it's totally reading out zero as a piece of public data. If I click this button, it goes all the way up to 65,535. So essentially, we've taken this weird variable input and turned it into a one bit output that either saturates at zero or totally on. So you can imagine like if we had a light that we wanted to turn on or a relay or something like that, if we feed that value into a PWM, it's either off or on. That seems really, really solid. Let's take a look at pin number 17. We'll say configure auto sample on that one. And it's this weird three position switch. So down there at the bottom, it's at 1,200. In the middle, it's at 1,400. And at the top, it's at 1,700. So let's set our values there at 1,650, 1,300, uh, 1,350. 1,650 and 1,350.
And what we can see is now when the switch is in one place, we get a saturated high. We put it to the middle. It goes about to the middle. Is it around 32,000? Not exactly. It's going gonna, it's gonna to oscillate there. But in software, we could definitely see that that was the middle. And then if we put it down low, it goes totally to zero. So you can see what we're doing here is we're essentially scaling all of our various inputs to use the exact same range. So that, you know, once we get past this, this stage of the serial wombat chip, you don't have to remember or calibrate to say, oh, you know, I remember that this pin goes from this level to that level or this level or that level. As soon as we hand it off to somebody else who's going to consume those signals, they all mean the same thing. Zero means all the way one way, 65535 means the other way, and maybe there's values in the middle that are proportional or in the case of that switch, just a single value. So we've got a couple more. These ones are some proportional inputs that are under a cover on the top. I got a couple of knobs on the top. If I turn those back and forth, you can see we get that same range, 2135 down to 868. So I'll use the same scaling for that one that I used for the first one. What was that exactly? Nine twenty five to twenty one twenty five. Enable the input processing and configure input scaling. And now if I turn that knob all the way to one side, I get not quite saturation. So I'm going to turn that max down a little bit further. I want it to saturate. And then if I turn it all the way the other way, and that looks like it's saturating at zero or very close to it. And then we can expect the other pin on the other knob on pin 19 to be similar. Okay, we're seeing a 18 something up to 2135. So let's go and we'll use the same values that we used for pin 18, 925 and 2075. Yep, got to hit enabled, then hit that hint configure. Okay, and we can see we go all the way down to the bottom and all the way up to the top. So that's working really, really well. Now let's do some fun stuff with those particular inputs. All right, now let's take a look at the fun stuff. Uh, what I've got here is a variety of components that, hey, maybe we would maybe make a robot or something like that out of there. So first of all, your robot needs to be able to go forward and backwards. This right here is a, a continuous rotation servo. In theory, we could attach that, say, to a couple of drive wheels. Your robot's going to want to be able to steer. This servo right here is a standard servo. We're going to hook that one up to the wheel on the controller, and that could potentially be our steering. And what is our robot going to do? I don't know. Let's give him a flashlight that we will implement using uh, WS2812 LEDs. We'll hook that up to the three position switch on the controller so that we can vary the brightness or turn it off. Let's make that flashlight capable of panning and tilting. And we'll use the two top uh, buttons on the controller to do that. And then uh, we've got this one leftover switch. Didn't know exactly what to do with that. So let's give our our robot a little horn. We attached a beeper that we can uh, control with that. So certainly it's it's possible for us to uh, have the Arduino that would be attached up control all of these things. But again, one of the powerful things that the Serial Wombat 18AB chip can do is tie various lines together. So let's start experimenting with that uh, right off the bat. So we're going to go to pin zero. 
Oh, and before we go further, let me talk a little bit about the hardware. Uh, over here, I've got a power distribution block and servo uh, connector. And what that does is it lets you power all of your servos and other 5-volt stuff off of one uh, input voltage and also provides a nice breakout for the servo connectors. So I've got the four servos and the uh, WS2812 all connected up to that block. And I'm going to hook that up to a USB power supply right now. So if you take a look on your screen, you can see the various uh, connections that are listed. So now right off the bat, let's uh, control our first servo. And I believe this is the tilt servo. And so we're going to want to tie that in. First, let's just power it up. We will configure that as a servo and we can see oop. okay that's our that's our panned servo and so he is capable of going back and forth we can hear, hear him uh, oscillating a little bit so then number one that makes number one our tilt servo so we're going to go to servo on that one and say configure. And we can see our servo moving up and down there as we drag this particular line. So let's tie these two servos into the control into the uh, knobs that are on the top. So we said before that those two knobs are on pin 18 and 19. And so we're going to tell it uh let's base that i'm sorry i need to look at that look at the servo let's base uh the pan on servo 19 and enable control so now at that point if i take this guy there we go and turn him back and forth the serial wombat chip sends that value to the servo. Let's do the same thing for ser the servo on pin one. We will set him up to pay attention to pin 18. Now at this point, if I turn this, we can control that servo from the uh, RC controller. Next, let's work on the trigger. Uh, that one is on pin, I believe, number five. And so we'll say servo. And that's our continuous rotation servo. So if we say configure, we can see that guy uh, over here. Let me move him over. Oops, it's kind of going to bump my finger. So, but he's spinning. And so as we send him to the center, to 32,000 or thereabouts, he stops moving, and to either side, he'll spin in either opposite direction. So let's take, and that's pin number 15 that's coming in from the controller. So let's route that there. And if I take my controller now, and I move this trigger back and forth, I can make that servo move in either direction at varying rates. So that's, that's pretty solid. Next, let's take uh, pin number six, which is our uh, steering servo. We'll configure that. Okay, we can see him moving back and forth, no problem there. Let's tie him in to pin number 14, which is our uh, steering wheel on the controller. So now we've enabled that. So if I do this, move that out of the way, turn this, you can see that servo that's moving in proportion. And we could reverse that polarity if we wanted to. Next one is the pin number eight, which has a, a piezo buzzer on it. We're gonna set that up as a PWM, but because of the way we configured this switch earlier, it's only gonna jump back and forth between minimum and maximum. And so we will tie that into the switch which is on pin number 16 from the controller. 
So if I come down here and push this button, our buzzer goes off. So now we have a remote control horn. The final interesting one now is the WS2812 controller, uh, which is on pin number two. So we're going to go to WS2812. And there's a whole video on using WS2812 LEDs uh, that you can watch. Take a look for a link up above my head. We're going to configure this and we're going to use it in bar graph mode. That's the mode where one pin can pay attention to another. Let's set it for 1 8 inch, 1 8 brightness. I don't want to max out our brightness. So we'll take 1 8 of white and our minimum, maximum. We will configure this guy and configure that. And so now we can see up in public data, we need that to be our pin number uh, switch, which is 14, 15, 16, 17, pin number 17. So if we configure that now, we can see, okay, where's the switch at? I think it's in the middle. If I flip it all the way to the left, all of the LEDs go off. If I flip it in the middle, half of the LEDs come on. If I flip it to the right, all the LEDs come on. And we saw that there was a little bit of flicker. And why is that? Well, we're getting a little bit of oscillation in the value that we're reading from pin number 17. So it would be nice if we could get rid of that because really we know this is a discrete input, not a continuous input. So let's go over here to averaging. This is a switch. It doesn't really have to be sampled that often. So let's set up our control to be an averaged output. Now if I turn this on and I put it in the middle, you can see that it sticks half of my LEDs and I could stand to move those points a little bit to make the bar graph go all the way up and down. And if I, if I flip the switch again, we get full brightness, half brightness, and that's probably too much filtering because I've introduced some lag there. So let's go back. Yeah, because I forgot we don't we don't sample every one millisecond on the input uh, thing like we do on analogs. We actually only sample every time a pulse comes in and pulses only come in at 50 hertz over servo. So let's make this respond in one quarter of a second. So we'll set the average number of samples to 12 and see if that works a little better. Oh, yeah. And we're not getting that flicker we had before. And we could turn on the lights half power, off, or full power. So, as you can see, pretty configurable. You could potentially use the ability of the Serial Wombat chip to download that configuration and run it at power up. So you could run headless without a uh, an Arduino. But really, the thought behind this is, hey, maybe we're controlling a robot that sometimes is remote controlled, but we may want to set it off on autopilot as well. So, you know, at that point, then you'd have the Arduino uh, disable these automatic connections between the 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 uh, RC controller and the Arduino. I'm sorry, between the, we'd have dis at that point, you'd disable the automatic connections between the controller inputs and the servo outputs. And maybe we'd get rid of that horn and use that number three switch to turn autopilot versus manual pilot on and off. At some point, my intention is to build a tank style robot that shows off a lot of these features. Uh, but that's that's in the future, uh, probably after I get an H-bit bridge driver related uh, pin mode in place. So that's about all I've got for, for the Serial Wombat app. Let's take a look at an Arduino app that does all of the same things that we did here. If you go under Examples, Serial Wombat, Serial Wombat 18AB, Serial Wombat 18B Pulse Timer, RC Hobby Servos, there's three examples in here, RC1, RC2, and RC3. RC1 is the most basic example. It just dumps the results of the uh, pulse timing out to serial so you can see them. RC2 then incorporates the input processing scaling that takes those pulses and scales them from 0 to 65, 535 
based on the constants we figured out in the Wombat panel application. And then RC3, which we'll take a look at, is the full example that also uh, talks to the servos in WS2812. So here's a quick uh, uh, overview at the top. It says basically watch the video. So we're going to declare a serial Wombat chip. We're going to declare pulse timers for each of the six channels. We're going to declare some servos for the steering, the drive, uh, the pan and the tilt. We'll declare a PWM for the horn and a WS2812 for the lights. And we're going to turn on the, the oscillator tuner. This makes uh, the accuracy of the serial Wombat chip timing a little bit better. Uh, there's another video on that that I'll link to up above if I've still got some cards left at the end of this video. So we're going to start up I squared C, start up serial, start up the serial Wombat chip. I'm assuming it's on address 6B. We're going to, for the RC wheel, we're going to do a begin. Remember, RC wheel is a pulse timer 18AB object. We're going to begin using the default parameters on pin 14. We're going to enable processing on that. And we're going to set the scale on that to minimum 925 microseconds, maximum 2115 microseconds to saturate at 0 and 65535. You can go back and watch the earlier part of the video. Then we'll do the same thing for the throttle trigger, the uh, on-off switch, the three-position switch, the two knobs on the top. And then we're just going to attach servos, for some reason in Arduino, attach instead of begin, to pins 6, 5, 0, and 1. And we say write scaling enabled true, and we tell it the pin that corresponds to the input that we're supposed to scale to. So input pin 14, that's our wheel. Output is our steering servo. And probably could have given these pound defines to make it a little clearer, or put some better comments in here. But uh, hopefully people are watching the video on this. The uh, same thing, trigger goes to our continuous spin servo. Uh, 18 goes to pan and 19 goes to tilt. The lights we're going to say are on pin two of the serial Wombat chip, the WS2812s are. There's 16 of them and start them at off. The bar graph for the lights should look at pin number 17. That's the three position switch. Zero for off. Uh, 20, 20, 20. That's an RGB value that's uh, dim white. And we scale that from zero to 65, 535. The PWM horn is just that buzzer on 8, and we're telling it take a look at pin 16. And then we go into the main loop. The main loop is going to print out the values of the six inputs, but isn't driving any outputs. Again, the uh, all of the output driving happens inside of the serial Wombat chip right now, and so there's really no control going on from the Arduino. And then we call Ostune periodically after about a minute, the uh, the tuner should be fully settled into the perfect value that instead of being off by a percent or a percent and a half may only be off by 0 0.02 or 0.05 percent. So improvement in tuning. So we want to do that here to get consistency. So that's about it. I'm not going to show you it working again because it looked just like the, the previous example. Uh, hope that you've learned a little bit about how to read pulses and how to scale for RC servos with this, how to hook some pins together. Uh, would love to know what you're using the Serial Wombat chip for. You know, if you're on this video, probably you're interested in pulse timing. Let me know what you're up to. You know, maybe I can, in the future, add additional features that facilitate your, your use case. Certainly that's happened before. So leave me a comment down below. Like the video if you like. Definitely subscribe so that you get uh, additional information about new features that come out. Uh, you may follow me on Instagram as well. Sometimes I put up pictures or status updates that don't necessitate an entire video being made. So it's a good place to get some information. And finally, please send me pictures or descriptions of what you're up to. Uh, you saw earlier that uh, I featured Isaac Jones and his website at the beginning of this video. I'd love to feature some pictures or a link to your, your material and what you're up to. So uh, anyway, that's about all for today. Have fun, keep making stuff, and pick up some Serial Wombat products at Amazon.com. The Serial Wombat firmware is available on GitHub and is constantly being updated. Subscribe below so that you can see the latest features and videos that come out as we fix bugs and add new features. 
The Serial Wombat open source project was created by Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IESA 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.